he's going up against the unknown Daniel Dos Santos boxing for the first time in a 10 rounder boxing for the first time out of France and for the first time ever boxing against a real live opponent as well how will the Frenchman in the red trunks cope with Daniel Dos Santos uh, cope with Joshua Boazzi and will Boazzi be surprised by what Dos Santos brings to the party lots of questions let's find out if we can get some answers here Well, the first thing that Joshua Boazzi always does, Nick, is he takes centre in behind a very yeah. stiff jab. Yeah. No feeling out process. Yeah. That's getting straight, straight stuck into you. So you feel his power and you know, and that often creates a little bit of hesitancy in his opponents. And just that will carry all the way up to world level. He's just, in the last couple of fights, the, the timing and his feet have just been a little bit off. Not sure whether that's because he's been slightly overtrained. I think that's certainly been evident. Maybe just. Uh, Sometimes up at GB in Sheffield, they're doing two, three sessions a day, a little bit too much, and leaving too much in the gym occasionally. Will he be a bit fresher tonight? Certainly started sharply. Yeah, yeah. you took the words out of my mouth, Chris, exactly that. He comes right out, takes the centre of the ring, and he slams that solid jab right into his opponent's face. He does it every time. It's so impressive. It's, uh, it's the ideal approach, I think, in a 12-round professional contest. Yeah, I think... Uh, for anyone that's been ringside and, and heard him punch, I'm speaking to, to Rob Tevitt, one of the prominent journalists here, just saying that you know, there's certain fighters you really remember the snap of their punches. Inoue is one of them. Joshua Boazzi, it, the sound when his punches land just is different. Real sharpness, so explosive, spiteful as well. Yeah, he's a venomous puncher, isn't he? He really is. One of a slew of uh, very, very good. British light heavyweights, as you've already mentioned, Anthony Yard and Callum Johnson fell short against Russian opponents in tilts for a world title. Then Lyndon Arthur put himself into the mix, beating yeah. Anthony Yard. And then Craig Spider Richards, two weeks ago in this ring, gave Dmitry Pivot a run for his money and showed that he too belongs in that group of uh, five. All of them think they're the best light heavyweight in the country. And it'll be interesting to see how that shapes up over the next couple of years. Caught with a little check left hook on the way in there, Boatsy. It got caught behind the ear. Yep. As he stepped in. It's such a fantastic jab, and of course he'll be in a little bit of transition right now. You know, when you when you go to a, a world-renowned trainer um, after having been with your own team for quite some time, you, in my opinion, you try to adapt that number one trainer's most impressive boxer or most successful boxer style. That's the way he's going to teach you. So what you're probably looking to see tonight is probably there'll be a little bit of Andre Ward type style for Joshua Batsy. Sometimes you've got to remember you can't forget yourself and what you do as well and what you know what you are as a fighter and trying to turn into someone else after being so you know so programmed to do your own thing it can be very difficult and, and it can see fighters actually come up worse. They can see them come short, you know. He's a little leery of you now. He's trying to feel you out, but he's a little leery of you. So he doesn't look like he won't engage. He just stays focused, okay? Doing what you do. When you stick that arm out, move it out of the way, okay? From here. Move it out of the way from here. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. When he turns his back, hit the closest thing to you. Don't okay. reach around. Hit the closest thing to you, okay? Real good job. Breathing good. Good first round. Mm -hmm. Way to be alert. Okay. Way to be alert. Yeah. <laughs> Stay alert. And step in corners. Virgil Hunter has his, his way, stays on the outside of the ropes, delivering his assessment Second in the first three minutes. Round two. One thing that is universally agreed on with Virgil Hunter is that uh, he is very good at preparing his fighters on the mental side of the game. Gets him in a very good place mentally. The reason he uh, he stands in that position, Nick, is so that he can see the opposition corner while he's talking to his fighter, gauge kind of how they're feeling. And, and he said to Joshua Boatsy there, he said he's wary of your power already. Just selling him to just keep those parries nice and short, keep the hand close to the face. Sometimes been a little bit guilty of over exaggerating the parry, then just getting caught with a left hook around the back of it, Josh Boatsy. But fundamentally, likes what he's seen from the Londoner so far. Yeah, he's certainly got the Santos's attention, that's for sure. And I'm sure that's one thing Virgil Hunter would have said is don't rush in on this fella because you just don't know what's coming from him. 
Yeah, well, his approach has been very good so far. Yeah. He done exactly what Chris said at the start. He came right at the centre of the ring and he established his jab right away. Oh, oh he's, he's putting it up under some pressure. Three, four, well, he's got it. An early six, knockdown for seven, Dos Santos to eight, deal with, and that is the power that uh, Buatsi does bring. Even if he doesn't land clean, there is so much yeah, power. Very powerful guy. That he can take you down. Let's get another look at that. At the end of the round, but he knows he can sting him, and Dos Santos knows he can be hurt as well. He was shaken up, and he's still got half of this second round to uh, navigate here. As Dos Santos looks to try and avoid the big howitzers here. Yep, it was a long, hard, straight right hand to the body as well from Buatsi. Yep, Dos Santos looks... Uh, a little bit wary now, doesn't he? Uh, I was going to use the word respectful, but yeah. Let him go. Let him go. Head up, man. P pick a word in the vote, you know, out of the dictionary for a guy that's saying, "Hey, I don't like, I don't like what I'm in with here." He knows that Buatsi can bang. He knows it at first-hand experience now. And there he goes again. And uh, was that a dip at the knees? Well, he switched at this point, and yeah. uh, that was where Buatsi took uh, Marco Chalic out. That long looping right hand—that's what he'd be looking for here. Believe you me. You're just moving him onto it, giving him that exit to his left hand side there and he's he swinging that right hand over the top, yeah. landed twice. He landed it again there and Dos Santos scurries into a corner. <laughs> and avoids the follow-up right hand this time. Tough guy Dos Santos did a stretch in prison when he was very young, has spent a number of years in the military too. This is the guy that is is fearful of anybody, but at the moment he knows he's in with a different animal altogether. Yeah, I tell you, yeah. He's looking He's terrified to take those body shots. He's I was going to say, guys, he looks so uncomfortable yeah, already. Yeah, he looks so scared, Jeff. Those body shots are. I can tell you guys, I've, I've taken those body shots on, on yeah. the pad at even 60, 70 percent. They are, they are something else. And uh, I remember thinking, I don't know how guys are, are taking these with, without any protection or padding. He's, he's so explosive, so spiteful, and the placement of, of the shots. He really turns his knuckles over on every shot. That was the shot that I think actually yeah. buzzed uh, Dos Santos just before he opened up in the corner. He just d dipped into, uh, dipped into range, took his head off centre line, and oh, then yeah. threw the left hook. And yeah, I thought it was a body shot, Chris. It was a right hand. It was, yeah. That was the shot that, uh, that followed up, wasn't it? Got him in the corner. Chop the right hand on the temple there, and then again, yeah, he's in real, uh, he's in real spot of bother here, isn't he, Dos Santos? I don't think he's going to see the final belt. Try and find a way to try and navigate these rounds. Unless he gets lucky with something, okay? We're not going to have that. Second corners. You know what he's thinking, don't you, Dos Santos? He's thinking those 15 opponents that I've beaten. None of them hit me like this fella's oh, just hit me. You can see it. He's taken just 24 rounds to get rid of his last eight opponents. When you consider two of the, of the opponents were responsible for 14 of those rounds, it tells you how destructive he, he can be at his best. Yeah. They were making the comparisons when him and... Anthony Arl were both unbeaten. I remember Tony Avalon, fellow Frenchman, said there, there is no comparison between the two of them. He said, Boazzi hit me harder, faster, and in greater numbers than, than Anthony Arl was able to. He said he's a far more ferocious competitor. For me, the, the moment, the leader, the leader of the pack has to be Craig Richards. It's a very, very competitive performance against yeah. Bilbao. Caught with an uppercut there, Boazzi. But responded immediately with a left hand. Thought Richards was terrific a couple of weeks ago. He talked to Peter Sims after that fight and said, just got the feeling with a little bit more self-belief, he could have actually won that fight and he will certainly come again. Here, it's Dos Santos that needs a bit of self-belief. Absolutely. Well, Richards and Boazzi is a, is a fantastic fight. It really is, at domestic level. And you'd like to see that before either of the two of them even look to move on up again. Richards didn't disgrace himself at all, as you no, mentioned. Won a, won a few of the later rounds against uh, Dimitri Bivol, and you'd fancy him to be very competitive against somebody like Joe Smith. But you'd also oh. fancy Boazzi to be competitive. He's so, so ferocious. What a brilliant division it is now, the light heaven. It is. In the UK, so good. It is a real kind of murderous row of, uh, of fighters at the top level. And I'd say to all of them, make your hay now because Canelo's coming. <laughs> oh, what a thought. Canelo's coming. No, he's just trying to 
work his way through these early rounds here, Dos Santos. But he is so circumspect, understandably so. Not rushing his work here. A little right hook around the back of the, uh, the jab there, that was nice. There, right. no, he's managing to evade some of these. If there was one thing that you would say about Bias, is that uh, Joshua Bias's attacks on the ropes are a tiny bit predictable at this point still. Tight, tight. Yeah, and the other thing, I think sometimes he throws everything as a. Bias just needs to calm himself down there, and this is where Virgil Hunter will come in. Settle him down, but that might be the worst thing he could have done there, Dos Santos. <laughs> As a Scotsman yourself, Alex, you'll know that you don't mess when a Scotsman starts waving the finger at you. No, I know, especially a little bold one. <laughs> you wouldn't call him that to his face. No, definitely would. Victor Lachlan laying down the law, settling them both down, but Boazzi certainly didn't like what Dos Santos did there and let him know. No conversation. Good body shot there from Joshua Boazzi. Yeah, that might just have wound Boazzi up. And he needs to get himself focused again. <laughs> body shot in there, Bingo. Dos Santos. He's got through another round here, the Frenchman. Yeah. Not the easiest guy in the world to catch clean. Yeah, he's actually quite cute, isn't he, on the yeah. ropes? He yeah. kind of slips and slides well, but small movements, nothing too exaggerated. Seems to see quite a lot coming. Bats needs to keep his composure. Try and slow this guy down a little bit before loading up with those big shots. And a little bit too obvious just now. Okay. His attacks are quite deliberate. And okay. Look here, go there, look there, go here, okay? Okay. Yeah, just a little bit savvy, a little bit more savvy. Stick that straight arm out and get that pit straight right, right in the pit, okay? This is where the Santos decided to uh, employ some playground tactics. Boazzi didn't like it at all. But settled himself down again. Three down. Here is round four. Joshua Boazzi in the predominantly black trunks. Against a very circumspect looking Dos Santos. And uh, he got caught there. Managed to stay upright. This is where Boaz is kind of at his most ferocious best, but also, I suppose, his most vulnerable in that sense because he can get wild. He's a very, very instinctive finisher. And he is clearly a little bit rattled and a bit uh, a bit yeah. wound up by, by what yeah. happened in the previous round. And he, he's kind of, uh, he's got that kind of alpha male switch where he's, he, he really is keen to show a display of, of dominance and, and be the dominant figure in that ring, which he definitely is so far. But I can tell you now, if he gets even a sniff that Dos Santos is badly hurt, he won't see out the round. He's an absolutely ruthless finisher. We've seen that, Boazzi, that is for sure. Having said that, Dos Santos has got up off the floor already. Showing his heart. And he certainly, as you said earlier, guys, he's certainly pretty slick moving around, trying to stay out of trouble. But it is definitely safety first from him. And he wants any part of engaging with Boazzi here, does he? He's got some squeaky boots as well. <laughs> <laughs> now you've now you pointed out everyone at yeah. home will uh, will notice it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good left hand there from uh, Dos Santos as he just exited off the ropes, but he walked into a right. Good jab from Boazzi. This is probably his best weapon, you know, is his solid jab. It's, yeah. it's like a ramrod that comes out so quickly as well. There's so much weight on it. Goes straight right hand to the body. He's going to have to start punching where Dos Santos is going to go, I think, a little bit. Dos Santos getting himself out of trouble again. Yeah. Well, again, he's doing a great job of just messing Boaxi up here. Let it go, boys. Set up. Thank 
Good job. Well, he's not offering an awful lot at the moment, Dos Santos, but he is making Boazzi look a little bit one-dimensional and ordinary here. I'm sure some of those British light heavyweights we've been talking about will be saying to themselves at home, oh, I'd have got this fellow out of there by now. Oh, that will be that. Don't bother counting that. Wow. That's what he does. Absolutely destructive power with that right hand, and he went down in such a manner that you knew that he could be in some distress here and hopefully Daniel Dos Santos is okay because he took the full force of that and was out before he hit the canvas. And this is where you see the real man in, in Joshua Boazzi. He, uh, the, the switch immediately comes off and the first thing he's ever done, for those of you who watched him, he goes straight over to his opponent, even if they've been stopped on their feet, to make sure they're okay. And until they are, you won't see anything else from him. He'll be nothing but concerned and compassionate. He's a man of God. He puts his faith in God. And the last thing he says, you'll see him kneeling to the ropes before the fight, is that we both come out of this ring safe, no matter yeah. who wins or loses. That is all that he will be thinking of now. And all we're thinking of now is if Daniel Dos Santos is safe or not, because that was uh, an incredible right hand. That really was. I mean, that, that is that is Joshua Bawatsi and what he can do. You know, just as I was saying, he's looking a little bit ordinary, looking a bit pedestrian here. Then he uncorks. Wow. An absolutely lethal right hand. And Daniel Dos Santos, as I said, Victor Lachlan didn't need to be told. There was no point counting that. He was out. And hopefully, well, the paramedics are in. Hopefully he'll be okay. Well, he's on his stool. That's good. The uh, the uh, the signs, the noises are encouraging, but they won't rush anything here. Can you ask him what's his name? Danny, okay. Your silly question. Where are you right now? Where where are you right now? You're in London? Manchester. Okay. Yeah, that is, yeah. This is, this is good stuff in the paramedics. You remember? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. It's silly questions, but I just want to make sure that you're okay. Looks like you're doing all right, man. Just like, yes. And that is what we all want to hear, that he's doing all right, because that was a heavy, heavy knockdown. No way he was getting up from that. Yeah. Well, that's what Boazzi does, though, isn't it? You know, he can look a little bit, well, uh, you know, he's not quite got this fella, and then suddenly, boom, one shot, and it, 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 it's a wipeout. You okay? Okay. I do right, think, we're Nick. Try, we're going to try it out now, okay? Sometimes with Boazzi, because everything he hits you with is so hard from the off, as I say, it creates that real hesitation in opponents, and they tend to go up into their shell, okay. and that makes it harder to unpick for him. Can we just wonder whether sometimes varying up the tempo of the shots, uh, just a few feints here and there. Take, take it from me, uh, as someone that's known him personally well for, for five or six years, an extremely compassionate, kind individual who is uniformly nice to everybody that he meets. But I tell you what, when that switch goes in the ring and the first bell goes, a, a completely different beast. But as you say, once okay, that switch okay. goes off as well, that, that's it. He's, he's, he's a very, very humble, respectful, decent human being, Joshua Guatzi. And, and to be fair, nearly every professional boxer would have been concerned in that situation. You, you see someone go down that heavy, you're not celebrating. No, of course not. And, uh, you know, but what you see there is, is the, the, the kind of different shades of Joshua Guatzi. He was brought up on the streets of Ghana came over was ingratiated into a, a gang in South London he then found God but that kind of road man is, is in him that, that bit of bite and sometimes you'll see someone press his buttons uh, at the press conference of the way in and you'll see his eyes change and, and what's just, a road man uh, it was kind of like a, a gangster in uh, London Ah, yeah, right. but but he was but he was in he was he was in deep at one point and he was you know he, he's he's got that street fighter in him and sometimes you just see someone disrespect him and his entire demeanour will change his eyes go dead and he's actually for that moment almost a different person and, and so that that switch flicking is genuine. But there's Dos Santos obviously emotional, which can sometimes happen when you're heavily concussed, you know, Alex. And yeah. Oh yeah, he'll be he'll be very upset, but I think it could just be a a symptom of him actually realising what's happened here. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm sure Bartz will be feeling unbelievably compassionate towards him. In fact, he looks upset looking at the fellow. <laughs> yeah, and Virgil Hunter's gone over there. Make sure he's okay as well. Yeah, he's absolutely distraught, isn't he? Oh, oh, okay. Absolutely distraught. He came over there with all his dreams himself. Uh, had that big underdog tag. His dream was that he was going to be the man walking out of here with his unbeaten record intact. And that's gone up in smoke. One huge, huge right hand. And that's good night. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's going to take some getting over. Well, I honestly think, Nick, what's probably happened is he, he just realised in the midst of that that he had been stopped. So sometimes you hear strange things from fighters. This is the stoppage. Just gave him the level change and the feint to the body and then just came through the, with, the, with the right hand to the chin. And honestly, he was out before he hit the floor. Yeah. Absolutely out like a light before he hit the floor. One of the most savage knockouts. Wow. Completely gone. Wow. Wow. It was that little feint to the body that just sold it perfectly because it just brought the arms down, just drew the reaction, and then he stepped in. He see Proatis' reaction oh, straight away when he realises yeah, yeah. what's happened there. The guy's got a heart of gold. Yeah, he has. What a punch that was. Do you know, angle-wise, it came in a little bit like with uh, with Pacquiao and Hatton, the way, it, the way it landed on the chin and kind of arced over and through. But uh, for poor Daniel Dos Santos, his ambitions have been curtailed in uh, bludgeoning fashion. Didn't see it at all, did he? It came no. from low and looped no. over the top. Yeah. And Boazzi sold in the eyes to the body too. There was even a little bit with the second follow-up as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. And that, that produced the reaction you can see there from Boazzi because yeah, no the, first one had, the first one had done all the damage, of course, and Victor Lachlan immediately said, there's no need to count this. And now the compassionate side of Joshua Boazzi comes out, but that right hand would have felled any light heavyweight in the world. Maybe in a heavyweight. <laughs> oh Not sure you're going to get too many arguments about that. Honestly. Oh, no, really? Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Victor Lachlan calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage. Two minutes and 44 seconds of round number four. Your winner by technical count out. He's still undefeated and still the WBA International Life Heavyweight Champion, Joshua Buatzee.